What is up home workout and bodyweight exercise dads? Before I dive into today's video, if you enjoy this channel's content and you'd like to get daily motivation and advice similar to what you get here, make sure you subscribe to our busy dad newsletter. By doing so, you'll be also getting our free five-day nutrition course that helps you tackle all the common nutrition obstacles that you struggle with, again, as a busy dad. It only takes a minute to do this, so go get it done and come back to keep watching. One of the best ways to stick to any habit in the long run, especially when you're pressed by all kinds of responsibilities, is by aggressively minimizing any friction that stands between you and the things that you want to do. As trivial as it might sound, even the slightest additional effort can significantly impact habit formation and maintenance in the long run. An example that I like to use when it comes to this topic, which is not really workout related, but music related, in case we also have some dads here that enjoy practicing their instrument, is keeping your guitar on a guitar stand instead of having it zipped in a case in order to ensure that way ease of access whenever you have available time for practice. Obviously, this is why I'm also such a big fan of more calisthenics and home workout routines since they eliminate all the extra steps required for working out when you depend solely on a gym. So to finally get to today's topic, another huge factor that can create additional friction and kill your motivation before you even begin, especially when you're constantly short on time, is a long warm-up. Therefore, the question becomes, how do you minimize your warm-up time without hurting yourself or your performance as a busy dad? Which is why today I'll be showing you how exactly to do just that, sharing with you the shortest warm-up routine possible to make sure that zero friction and excuses stand in the way of you and your goals. For starters, we'll begin with three dynamic stretches in order to quickly loosen up your tightest areas, which typically for the busy dad are the shoulders, lower back, hips and hamstrings. Ideally use a band for this one starting slowly with a wide grip and as you loosen up every five to eight reps start decreasing the width. If you don't have a band, backward arm circles can be another alternative. In that case I recommend 30 reps with your arms and fingers spread and fully extended. This is my favorite lower back mobility exercise. In order to get started, lie on your back and extend your arms in order to form a capital letter T. Keep your upper body as stable as possible by pressing your palms against the floor and rock your knees to the right and left, which is one repetition. Go for 15 reps in total, extend your knees more and more as you loosen up. Another alternative if you're training outdoors and you don't have a mattress or somewhere to lay down is simulating these by hanging from a pull-up bar, which will also further loosen up your shoulders. Especially after getting into my late 30s and having my sedentary working hours increase, my hips have been feeling more and more tight, making this one one of my favorite new warm-up exercises. Especially when you do these after sitting for hours, the feeling of tension release is instant and very pleasant. To perform these, stand upright and lean against something sturdy for support and balance. Start by lifting one leg off the ground and swing it first sideways and next back and forth, like a pendulum. Keep the movement controlled and smooth, aiming for 15 swings per leg. Your goal is to feel a light muscle stretch at the end of each swing's range of motion and slowly increasing that range of motion as you loosen up. If you train first thing in the morning, adding some mobility work for your cervical spine is also a good idea. My recommendation being head rotations and flexion and extension from a prone position. You can also do this from a standing position, but I prefer lying down on the ground for that extra pull of gravity that makes it even more efficient. Start by gently turning your head left and right, that is one repetition, and increase your range of motion as you loosen up. Bring your head backwards as if you're trying to look up in the sky, and next downwards as if you're trying to look at your sternum. If you want to feel an even deeper stretch of your neck flexors, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth on the way up. After our dynamic stretches, we'll be moving on to activation sets. What we're aiming for here is a high rope set that feels easy in the beginning, 
but becomes challenging at the end. This way, we get an important increase of temperature and blood flow in the target area without risking any unwanted strain. And at the same time, we get a set that contributes to our main workout volume and creates both decent enough strength and hypertrophy adaptations. Once you get in one activation set for each primary pull, push, and lower body exercise, you usually don't need any extra warming up for the rest of your workout exercises unless you have a movement pattern that is quite different. So to give you a better idea of how this works in practice, here are two examples, one more advanced and one more beginner. Let's say that my main workout consists of inverted row and push-up supersets and Bulgarian squats and box curls supersets. Before getting started with my upper body, I would start with a activation superset of inverted rows and push-ups at an incline angle that would allow me minimum 20 reps till technical failure or just a few reps shy of that, focusing as usually on perfect form. And after that, I'm ready to get started with the main part of my upper body workout. Next, prior to my lower body, I would start again with an activation superset that would include basic squats. And since my box curls are typically high rep, I wouldn't add anything extra for those, even though they're a more hip dominant exercise, so different movement pattern compared to squats and Bulgarian squats that are knee dominant and pretty similar. By the way, if regular squats are too easy for you, what you can do is either lift your heels and aim for a bigger range of motion, getting as close as possible to as to grass. Uh, other variations that you can also do uh, during those last reps would be things such as pausing for a second at the lowest point of the squat, doing pulse squats, which involve adding a short range of motion squat at the bottom uh, before returning to the starting position, or you can even add jump squats. Next, let's say that my main workout consists of pull-up and dip supersets, followed by Romanian deadlift and weighted Bulgarian squat supersets. Prior to my upper body, I would start with a activation superset of band-assisted pull-ups and band-assisted dips, using a band that allows me at least 20 repetitions that will bring me close to failure or a few reps shy of that. Again, using a nice controlled tempo and as always impeccable form. If you don't have a band with you, I would start again with a high rep activation set of inverted rows and push-ups since these target the same movement pattern and have overlapping muscle groups. After that, I would rest for about 90 seconds or again, more if you have enough time and I would move on to the main part of my upper body workout. Something else that I like to do, especially with push-up and pull-up activation sets is starting with 10 slow and smooth straight elbow reps right before my main reps. These are great for further activation of your shoulders, scapulas, and for priming a lot of the muscles that you'll be using next. And most importantly, you can easily squeeze them in without wasting too much time. Finally, before the lower body part of my workout, I would start with a high rep activation set of Romanian deadlifts using a lighter weight, but also following that with a set of Bulgarian bodyweight squats, since these differ a lot as movement patterns. You know, the one is more knee dominant, the other is more hip dominant. That was all for today. Keep in mind that if you have some areas of your body that are more sensitive and prone to injury, Adding some extra warm-up drills for them would be something to consider. You can check my more extensive warm-ups to do that, to pick some exercises to uh, include on top of the ones that I shared with you today. That was all. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them below. I always do my best to get back to every single one of you. And I'll next time. Keep on training.